have Liberty Christian, the number eight seed, versus Benedictine, the number four seed, in the first semifinal game here for Division One. Alongside Zach Collin and Cameron Westbrook, I'm Brian Rothman. Thanks so much for joining us here as we're in Petersburg, Virginia, Virginia State University for the VISA Championship Weekend. Great atmosphere here. Great crowds for both Liberty Christian and Benedictine. See how these guys play it out. Whether they come out feeling each other out like some of these teams have today or whether they're just full speed ahead. Benedictine wearing the white, green numbers. LCA wearing the blue, white numbers. LCA going left to right across your computer screen. Benedictine going right to left, and Benedictine will take the first possession. Starting for the cadets, Robert Johnson, Nick Coppola, shot from Johnson off the mark. Rebound going to be A.J. Richardson. Richardson's joined by Jordan Tylus, B.J. Farrow, Josh Majors, and Zach Klin. It'll be interesting to see how Benedictine's going to try to exploit their size advantage. LCA has the least points per game of all the divisions in the Final Four. I mean, they're definitely a control-type team. And they're playing five guys at 6'2 or under, where Benedictine has Gorski at 6'8 and Gill at 6'6. Starters for Benedictine, as we said, Johnson and Kukla, Gill, Gorsi, Gorski, and Miner for Robert Churchwell the second. LCA here just trying to control the tempo. A lot of dribble handoff action. Doesn't even look like they're looking to attack right now. Just maybe trying to kill some clock, make Benedictine guard a little. Head coach Jeff Platt for Liberty Christian. All righty, the Benedictine students yelling boring. Nice backdoor cut there for Farrow. The shot will not fall. Foul going to be called on Nick Coppola, his first, team first. First one is good. And one thing Benedictine has to look for on defense is that they don't get lulled to sleep like that. Liberty Christian's going to try to run clock, handoffs, back cuts, like we saw Virginia Episcopal do earlier in the day. And Benedictine can't bite on those uh, pass fakes and get back cut like that. 2 nothing. Liberty Christian taking the first lead. Ball gets back to the top for Johnson. Miner back to Johnson. Johnson shot goes wide right. Out of bounds. Coach Churchwell working the referees for a foul or blocked out of bounds, but no call on the by the referees. Nice back to her cut by Farrow again, and he finishes. Majors playing defense there on Coppola. Shot from the short corner will fall. Raymond Miner. Handoff action again. Trying Majors to get in the goes paint. into the paint. Shot no good. Fight for the rebound. Going to be tipped all the way to the other side. LJ, LG Gill will make it in transition. No big deal. Just their first tie tonight. Great take by Gill in transition. Liberty Christian got to find a way to get back. They want to hang around this game continue to make Cinderella story of themselves. They've got to get back in transition. 
Ball goes to the corner for Richardson. He goes baseline, passes to Clinton, back to Majors. Very patient team. Ball far side with Richardson. Richardson gets some space. A step inside the three-point line, no good. Rebound minor. Gorski guarding Richardson. He'll be content to give him those jump shots all night. Coppola goes baseline, kicks back out. Gorski shot no good. Put back, doesn't fall for Gill, but he's fouled. Foul on Jordan Tillis, his first, team first. Gill doing a good job early of asserting his will in the paint. Already with the transition layup, offensive rebound and a foul. LCA has got to find a way to keep him off the glass if they want to have a chance. First one's good for Gill. This is the second one. Rebound for Tillis. Ball comes to the other side, four majors. 3.50 left here in the first. Richardson. Benedictine switching all screens here that Liberty Christian is setting, especially the ball screens. Be interesting to see how Liberty Christian is going to adjust to that. Still staying patient on offense. Farrow goes in, the finger roll high off the glass. Great take by Farrow there. Gill needs to step out earlier on that switch. Don't let him get the angle on him, get to the rim. Johnson in it to Gill. Minor now. Foot on the line, shot off the mark. The putback is in for Gorski. There's that size advantage we were talking about earlier. Already Gorski and Gill have both got offensive rebounds that have led to fouls and or buckets. Nice back to her cut for Clinton, but he can't corral the pass. Checking in now for LCA, Cameron Holdren. Two thirty-five left here in the first. Ball getting into Johnson. Back top to the top to Kupla. Tries to go behind his back to Gorski. Ball gets free and it'll go off of the foot of an LCA player out of bounds. Not a very heady play there by Coppola trying to throw behind the back pass in traffic to the trailing big man. Nice lot pass to Gill and he'll make the fadeaway. LG Gill. Gill looking very impressive early, scoring in a variety of ways. Majors with a kick out to Richardson. Tries to throw it inside in traffic. He'll go out of bounds off of the cadets. Farrow will check back in. Tillis will come out. One thing I like about Benedictine's uniforms is they're very simple. You don't see that a lot of times <laughs> now, especially the new Adidas uniforms uh, that have come out. Yeah, those came out yesterday. Cadets are going to go the other way with it. 135. Head fake by Miner. Kicked back to the top to Gill. Nice pass. And Johnson able to find the twine. 
Great pass by Gill. Richardson goes up, it gets blocked by Gill. 1-10 to go, cadets in motion, nice bounce pass. And completing the play, Raymond Miner, timeout, Liberty Christian. This is the type of game that Benedictine wants to get into, up and down, fast pace. Defense leading to offense, whereas Liberty Christian needs to take a timeout, slow it down. Well, Liberty Christian, they're not doing anything they started the game doing. They've completely lost what they came in wanting to do. I think the problem is once you go down five and you only score at six, then you start rushing things. Right now, seven points seems so great because it's 13-6. Especially how slow yeah. Liberty Christian plays. But at the end of the game, I mean, you know, right now 13-6 is going to be a distant, distant memory once we get to the fourth quarter. And we've seen this every game where a run starts the game, and uh, that's not typically how the game ends. Be interesting to see what Coach Platt drew up here for the timeout. Set play coming out. Clinton with the ball on the wing. 48 seconds left in here in the first. Major's getting double teamed. Gets to the high post for Holdring. Kicked out. Clinton for three. No good. Rebound Johnson. Johnson goes to the bucket. Off the mark. Major is 25 seconds in transition. Farrow. DJ Farrow's had just some great cuts to the ball. He really has, really has. It seems he's always in position to score. Ran the wing hard. And has had a few back cuts for layups as well tonight. First one from Farrow is good. Barrow carrying this LCA offense early. Got to get a few other guys involved if they want to pull this upset. And that's literal. He has all eight points. Fifteen seconds. Coppola in trouble there. Great back cut by Robert Johnson. LG Gill on the backside cut. One second. Miners at the buzzer. No good. 15 8. LCA trailing Benedictine. What do you need to see LCA do uh, to kind of slow down this offense for they're, Benedictine? They're struggling to score, oh, to slow down Benedictine's offense. Definitely need to keep LG Gill and Gorski off the glass for one. Nice thing is both teams only have two fouls. A good pace, good flow to this game so far. Today's game, the VISA sponsor, Farmers Insurance. We are insurance, we are farmers. For more information, log on to farmers.com. I want to remind you that you can buy a DVD of today's game and of any game of our championship weekend here in the Final Four. Just click on the banner ad and we'll make sure to send you your game.
be interesting to see if LCA gets back to those early delay tactics that got them the lead at the beginning of this game. All near side with Richardson. I think the longer that LCA makes Benedictine guard, the more prone Benedictine is to get getting back cut for layups like we saw earlier in the game. Majors for three, no good. Rebound Gill. Kirkwood gets it in transition into the zone. Ball gets free, steal by, oh, Majors never got the steal. In the corner, Johnson no good. Rebound off of Gill out of bounds. Seems like sometimes Gill's just getting a running start, not getting boxed out by anybody in blue jersey. Coach Platt needs to talk to his guys about that. He boxed out so well early. Exactly. Farrow in the lane, kick out. Walking and be called on Tillis. Zach Quinn will check back in for LCA. Pick and roll gets spoiled by Farrow. He's been playing a huge game. Really has. Great help side defense there on the pick and roll. Coppola tried to force it down low. Didn't end up working. Farrow drives in. The floater can't fall. Rebound for Miner. Farrow only a junior. Played almost 10 minutes of game action here, and Farrow still the only one to score for LCA. Shot no good. It's going to stay with Benedictine. Tillis will come back in. Farrow comes out, so someone, someone's going to have to score here for LCA. Quick inbounds pass to Gorski. He gets blocked by Richardson. And I love Benedictine's in inbounds plays underneath their basket so far. They've had a lot of different options and got a lot of different looks, layups, very open jump shots. See if LCA can figure these out. Miner with the kick out. Back for three. No good. Majors with the hustle play, knocking that ball free, get the rebound. The runner won't fall. Let's go the other way for Miner. Coppola feeds it into Gill. Back out to Coppola. Thought about the three, put it back in the holster. From the short corner, Gorski also puts it back in. Drives in and puts it off the glass. Great finish by Gorski there. Coppola's doing a great job finding everybody who's open at this point in the game. Not really looking for his shot. Seems to be more of a pass first, pure point guard. Three-pointer, LCA, it's good! A.J. Richardson. And we saw that happen earlier in the game where Gorski gave him a jump shot and Richardson finally knocks one down. Miner drives, loses the handle, out of bounds. <laughs> Farrow going to come back in. He's got company now in the scoring column with Richardson. 11 minutes into the game.
Farrow going to drive right back to the hoop and put it in. Farrow's playing great offensively, getting to the rim whenever he wants. Benedictine going to take a full timeout. We'll step away for a full break as well. You're watching Division I semifinals, LCA versus Benedictine. 4.24 left here in the half. Welcome back here on VISA.TV alongside Zach Cullen and Cameron Westbrook. I'm Brian Rothamel. Right now, B.J. Farrow with 10 of LCA's 13 points. Benedictine with 17 points being led by L.J. Gill with 7 points. Benedictine needs to continue to go inside with that height advantage. Gill, Gorski. I've been getting pretty much whatever they want in there. See if they exploit it again. I mean, Gill's being guarded right now by Farrow. Mm -hmm. You can get Farrow out of the game. Yeah, that could be. A How many fouls does Farrow have? Farrow has none. That's none. what I'm saying. If you can. Uh, Gorski's turnaround hook and off the mark. Rebound Farrow. You've got to convert those opportunities. We saw it in the last game. Walsingham had a lot of looks around the basket. Didn't end up converting. Ended up losing by two. Majors from the top of the key, it's good, Josh Majors. Two point game now, 3.32 left. Back inside of Gorski, tries the right handed hook too hard. Gets his own rebound. Gorski's doing a great job of posting up and demanding the ball, but he needs to finish better. Foul on Cameron Holdren, his first, team third. In the corner, Gill for three. LG Gill just playing a phenomenal first half here. Ten points with three minutes to go in this half. And it's scoring in a variety of different ways. Richardson with it at the top. Kicks to Majors. He'll take another three. No good. Great box out by Gill underneath. Coppola with the runner off the mark. A foul call. Two shots for Coppola. Foul on Richardson. That's his second. Team fourth. I like what Coppola did there, pushing the pace, making LCA guard him, make the referees call a foul. This is the pace of game that Benedictine wants, up and down like that last possession. LCA wants a much slower pace, though. Tillis will check in for Richardson. Richardson. Clint with it at the top. Dribble handoff action here. LCA trying to lull Benedictine to sleep, see if they can get another back cut situation like they got earlier in the game. Holdren at the top just trying to set ball screen so those guards can get in the paint. Tillis! 
Jordan for three. Back to four points. Johnson, three-pointer. All made by Coppola right there. Got into the lane, Drew Johnson's man, kicked it out for the easy three. Tillis right back to him. Tillis coming out fire in these last two possessions. Got a little confidence. May need a heat check next time down the floor. I feel like it's raining threes in here. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, it's not actually raining. Johnson gets called for a travel before the shot. First round of our uh, state tournament game the other night, we had an actual rain delay. One hour long rain delay, four overtime game. Game was supposed to start at six o'clock. They had a leak in their roof. Finally, we started at 7.05. <laughs> Holdren up top setting those ball screens, trying to spring the guards free. Majors with a fadeaway gets blocked. Kuklo will bring it the other way. Tries the alley-oop with Gill. He makes it and is fouled. Gill is just everywhere offensively tonight. Scoring off offensive rebounds, running the lane, filling the wings, hitting threes. And there you see the lob in the end one. Raymond Miner checking back in for Benedictine. Kukla getting his uh, first break of the night. And Gill now with 13 points. LCA needs a bucket here going into the half. Cut it to four or five. I think they would go into the half happy with that, but down seven or more would be trouble for them, especially the slow pace they play. 25 seconds left here. Quick half. Only seven total fouls so far. Hand off to Clint, to Farah. Majors, six. Majors in, kick out to Tillis. Holdren with two seconds, no good. And no shot before the, the, before the buzzer would go off. 28, Benedictine, 21, LCA. Zach, what did you think of that half? Pretty good half of ball. Pretty good. Uh, Liberty Christians, they're not rebounding near as much as Benedictine. Going to need to score a little bit more points in the second half. <laughs> That's so not much to say. It's a pretty good game. Very true. Farrow has done a great job offensively for LCA, but LCA has got to find a way to stop Gill everywhere. 13 first half points. 28-21 as we head into half. We'll be right back here on VISA.TV. Stay with us. Welcome back here on VISA.TV alongside Zach Cullen and Cameron Westbrook. I am Brian Rothamel. Benedictine, number four seed, up on LCA, 28-21. Right now leading the way for LCA's B.J. Farrow. For Benedictine, L.G. Gill with 13 points, 10 points for Farrow. Gill, five of five from the field, one of one from three. Only miss he has as a free throw, doing whatever he wants offensively. LCA needs to find a way to slow him down. Benedictine going to start with the ball here in the third quarter. They'll be going left to right across your screen. Benedictine, excuse me, wearing the white jerseys and green numbers. 
Coppola with the running jumper and it falls. It's one thing we didn't see from Coppola in the first half, looking to find his own shot when he attacked. Most of the time he was attacking, looking to uh, pass the ball. That time he attacked, looking to score. Majors of the ball, top of the key. Gives it to Clint. Little handoff offense again. Tillis with it now, hands off to Richardson. Richardson with two fouls in the first half. Jump shot with a hand in his face off the back of the rim. Coppola gets the rebound. Seven minutes left here in the third. Johnson's three-pointer off the mark. Gorski stepped out on that last uh, pull-up jumper attempt by Richardson. One thing he did not do in the first half, Richardson burned him early on one or two jumpers in the first half. Major's runner no good. Rebound for Gorski. Up to Johnson. Makes the basket and is fouled. Soft foul there by Tillis. You need to teach your guys, if you're going to foul, don't let him get the end one. Checking in Cameron Holdren as well as Jared Josh. Jock did not uh, play in the first half. The end one is good from Johnson. Eight points tonight. Johnson looking for a shot a lot more in the second half than he was in the first half. Only two of seven in the first half. Richardson tries to feed it into Farrow. He was double teamed. Stolen by Johnson. Six ten left here in the quarter. Gopla drives, feeds it into Gill, who gets behind the defense. 15 points. Full timeout going to be called by Coach Jeff Platt for LCA. Coppola making very good decisions in this basketball game. Already in this half, two minutes in, got into the rim for a layup for himself. Just found Gill there for a nice assist. Coppola in the first half, eight assists, one turnover. Just adding to that total right there. Eight assists, then have yourself a, uh, a first half. And he's the smallest starter on the floor for Benedictine. Probably the least heralded, but does a lot of good things. Sponsor for VISA, Farmers Insurance. We are insurance. We are farmers. Visit farmers.com for more information. Fourteen point lead, largest of the night for Benedictine. Josh brings it down, gets the pass off to Farrow. Richardson. Five twenty left here in the third. Farrow drives in, kicks it back out. Foul going to be caught on Gill. That's his first, team first. Coach Churchwell has been asking for that de those defensive fouls. 
high ball screen here. What LCA has gone to a lot of the time. Back into their dribble handoff motion. Majors right now being guarded by Gorski. Majors with a head fake into the zone. Kick out to Josh. From the elbow, no good. Rebound going off of Johnson out of bounds. Defenders ran at Josh there. Looked like he rushed it a little bit. Holdren going to get to the foul line. Second foul on Gorski tonight. making his first point tonight. Holder missing the second, rebound Gill. Johnson trying to get some space on Richardson. There's a few bodies on the floor there. I'm not sure how anyone got down. Shocked the referees didn't call a travel there as he fell to the ground and rolled. Farrow trying to go in. He gets poked free by Gorski. Farrow has just not gotten going in this second half like he did in the first half. That was probably a huge point of interest for Coach Churchwell at halftime. 33-35 left here in the third. Three-pointer no good. Gill with the putback. Gill once again showing how versatile he is everywhere on the floor right now. Fifteen-point lead. Entry pass in for Farrell, got sent right back to his game, trapped in a timeout, gonna be called by Platt. <laughs> Clinton will check back in for LCA after this timeout, another full timeout, that's his last full timeout. <laughs> the LCA offense is just not looking for shots. Not at all, and they had 21 at halftime, and only one point here in this third quarter in the first four plus minutes. I think they need to go back to Farrow and try to get him some type of touches here. See what Coach Platt draws up coming out of this timeout. I wonder if Platt actually wanted a 30 second timeout. Because he left the timeout rather early. He's saying he called a 30-second timeout. Major's going to throw it in. Gets into Farrow, the reverse. Maybe that's what Farrow and LCA need to get going. See if they can get stops on this end. I'll tell you, Johnson airballed his first two shots. Since then, he scored eight points, but the LCA fans will, won't let him forget those first two shots. And if that was going to be called on Richardson, that's his third. And that could be big going forward. He's already picked up three. And LCA's bench isn't that deep. 
Johnson with the drive, able to make it. Great take by the junior there, looking to attack the defense, getting to the paint. After those first two air balls, like you said, he's definitely started to assert himself more. And he's also doing a great job defensively on Farrow. Benedictine switching, like I said earlier in the first half, just causes a lot of confusion for the offense. Don't know where you're going to get your looks because most teams don't switch everything like this. And what trust factor. Tillis for three. He has nine points, all of them from three-pointers. Shooting the ball well tonight. Well, what confidence for Benedictine on defense to be able to put Gorski on your, the point guard or on the post player or whoever. Exactly. Five, five guards on the floor at all times pretty much for LCA. Makes it a lot easier to switch. On the flip side, though, you have somebody like Majors guarding Gorski down there, which is a probably close to a foot size advantage. Foul going to be called on Tillis. That's his third, team third. Johnson in the corner, off the back of the rim. Rebound by Koopa. Knocked to Gill, and Gill with 19. Heads up play there by Copla. Tipped that rebound to Gill. Hope they gave him assists at the scores table. 105 left here in the third. Tillis goes in and puts the finger roll in. Gill's going to go the other way and put it off the glass. LG Gill is going to be a major player wherever he ends up next year. Why did they stop the game? I thought that Coach Church Nell called a timeout. But uh, it's incidental whistle. Able to get some subs in for both teams, though. Zach Quinn checking back in for LCA, as well as Cameron Holdren. For Benedictine, they got Celine Farrell in. Majors jump up to Holdren, who puts it off the glass. Twelve-point game here. Ten seconds to go in the quarter. Johnson for three. Too far. Tillis to Majors, gonna have to make it from half court. No such luck. 43-31, Benedictine leading. One more quarter to go for LCA. Try to continue their Cinderella run through this state tournament. Don't want the carriage to turn into a pumpkin. This game's moving rather well. Only three fouls for LCA and two for Benedictine. Not getting many free throws. Yeah, at the half, I mean, we only had nine free throws by both teams combined. LCA was four for four, Benedictine four for five at the half. But not that many chances to shoot yet here in the second half either. The winner of this game will play tomorrow in the championship game against the winner of Bishop O'Connell and Cape Henry. That game coming up next here from Virginia State University. Bishop O'Connell with highly recruited for Junior Eto and Cape Henry with UVA commit Devon Hall. Zach Klein going to throw it in here. Yeah. 
Majors comes near side to Farrow. Tillis to Majors. Back to Tillis. Loses the handle. Johnson's going to steal it. The breakaway layup for Robert Johnson. Great play there by Johnson. Getting offense off of his defense. Pressuring Tillis into the turnover. LCA going to take his fourth timeout. 14 point game and right now not only does LCA have the issue of trying to score on their end, it's getting the stops on the other end. That's a problem too. Definitely. Benedictine getting out in transition a lot more this half. Help, helping them uh, spike this lead from seven at halftime now to 14. Leading all scorers is LG Gill with 21 points. Robert Johnson has 12. BJ Farrow for LCA with 12. And Jordan Tillis with 11. Farrow trying to get it to Clint, stolen by Johnson again. Misses the layup, Copa misses the putback. His second chance will go in though. Heads up play by Coppola there. Very smart, high IQ point guard following up the Robert Johnson miss for an offensive rebound bucket. Major steps back for three. No good. Rebound Holdren. He gets fouled on the way up. Ball looks like it can be called against Raymond Minor. No. Correction. LG Gill. That's his second. And the third team foul. Nick Gorski about to check in. Going to try to keep Holdren off those offensive boards for the last 6.43. Holdren missing the front end. I'm sure Gorski also plays football for the cadets. He's definitely a wide load. Wouldn't be bad seeing him a tight end or a wide receiver. Definitely has the uh, height and good, good movement. Definitely puts in his work down on the block. Gill one on one with Clint. The step back. No good. Rebound for Farrow. Probably not the shot you're looking for there. Benedictine up 15 with six minutes to go in the game. Farrow will drive in off the glass. No good. And a foul going to be caught on Gorski. A late whistle. Farrow definitely hasn't gotten many touches and shots this half. Benedictine's kind of bottled him up. Farrow makes the first. He is 5 from 5 from the free throw line now. So when he gets the shots, he's pretty good at it. Farrow buries the second. LCA picking up full court man now. Six minutes to go in the game. Need to pick the pressure up. Reaching foul going to be called on Majors in transition. His first team fourth. Benedictine fans still rowdy in this fourth quarter. Sensing they're on their way to the state final. Six minutes to go. Another foul going to be called on Majors. <laughs> go 
Jaworski gets it back to Copla, and then we have a kick ball. Major's ball pressure on Copla, definitely making him feel uneasy, getting a little bit shaky with the ball in these last few minutes. Majors with the tip, stolen by Holdren. Ball getting fed into Holdren, goes up, he's fouled by Gill. I always like after the foul too, the defensive player then immediately puts her hands straight up. I was, I was straight up the whole time. That's all basketball players. 45 degree angle during the play. <laughs> straight up. Lane violation on LCA. Let's see if Benedictine gives Coppola a little help here these last five and a half minutes and handling the ball as Majors has been in him the last few minutes. Another ball gets tipped by LCA and then out of bounds off of Benedictine. And Benedictine wants to talk things over in a full timeout. We'll step away for a full break as well. You're watching Division I uh, semifinal state basketball tournament here on BISA.TV. Welcome back here on VISA.TV. I want to thank our crew for today's game. Cal Mincer and Austin Serson running cameras. Zach Cullen providing our stats. Cameron Westbrook, our color commentary. I'm Brian Rothmel and running our, the show. Our producer, our point guard, Chad Cecil. Thanks so much for joining us here on VISA.TV. Key going forward here these last five and a half minutes is can Benedictine handle the pressure that LCA is going to start to put on them. Holdering getting the dump. Jump ball in midair, and that's going to go to Benedictine on the alternating possession. Benedictine broke the press easily that time. Got Coppola a little help. Ended up with a layup for Gorski. Under five minutes to go. Majors for three, no good. Gorski with another defensive rebound. Gorski able to get to Kupla. Drives in and converting Miner. Another great pass there by Kupla. Just doing all the little things. He has to have 10, 10 assists now. Easily, easily. Probably closer 12 or 13. Benedictine switching all of those handoffs and ball screens. Richardson, no good. The putback from Farrow falls in. Johnson getting his man in the air. Can't put it in. Neither can Gorski on the putback. Miner will corral it, though. That's up 14. 
Layup no good for Johnson. Benedictine with three chances around the rim to get a bucket there, go 0 for 3. LCA on the attack now. Minor in the zone, hands it off to Holder and shot gets blocked and he's fouled. Foul on Gorski, now that's his fourth. Six team fouls, so LCA will shoot free throws the rest of the way. Still a long way from being over. 3.35 to go. Down 13. See if LCA can make a run. John's going to bring it down. Hand check and call on Richardson. That's his fourth. Team sixth. Free throws the rest of the way now for both teams. After Coach Churchwell called that timeout. They took the ball solely out of Coppola's hands, trying to beat that press single-handedly. Now Johnson, Miner, and Gill have helped out with the ball handling responsibilities. Majors is just such a, a pesky player. You know, it really is. really is. And Richardson gets his fifth foul. That's going to end his night. Richardson ending the day with three points. LCA has already put in their sub, so I don't know why they're having a 30 second clock here. Official still granted to him, so he might as well take it. Exactly. It's almost like a free timeout. Zach Lynn coming back in for the Bulldogs. Johnson shooting one plus one. First one's good. Johnson's rebounded well to have a pretty special offensive game after those first two shots. Had a very good second half attacking the room. Johnson again now, 14 points. Farrow finishing at the rim. 18 points for BJ. Coppola goes length to length and he gets blocked by Majors out of bounds. Three minutes left in this game. I like what Gorski's doing, kind of being that safety valve outlet. Anytime the guards get trapped, he's popping high. Johnson with the ball. Hands Great off pass. to Gorski. Short is put back. He gets fouled by Farrow on the way up. First foul for BJ. Great pass there by. Johnson off that ball screen. Gorski rolled hard. Needs to find a way to finish the first one, though. First one from Gorski off the back of the rim. First free throw of the night for Gorski there. Second one tickles the twine. Seven points. Gopla gets called for his second. 
It's the last thing Benedictine needs to be doing right now. He's letting LCA shoot free throws. Cope a little, a little too aggressive there. Two and a half minutes to go. You've got to know when to pick your spots, and that wasn't one of them. Tillis on his first one. Good. 12 points for Jordan Tillis. Three three-pointers. Twelve point game. Johnson gets the ball near side. He gets triple team. Majors with the steal. Throwing up to Farrow. Gets blocked by Gorski. Johnson will lead the way. He gets fouled by Holdren. Great block by Gorski there, saving a layup by Farrow. Johnson's first one is good. So far, a perfect four for four on the free throw line tonight. And Zach just put the broadcasting uh, jinx on him. I threw the jinx, as you say. Holdren working his way down the shot. No good, but Raymond Miner gets called for his first. Team ninth. These teams have been attacking the rim a lot more in the second half, starting to see more fouls than we did in the first half. Not settling for jumpers as much. I just don't know why LCA didn't do this earlier. You know, when they didn't have the size advantage, you can get foul trouble. And Holdren missing all, everything. Makes a second though. Ball gets into Johnson. He goes down the sideline. The reverse layup rattles in. Great finish there by Johnson. Under two minutes to go. LCA needs to make their move. Major's three-pointer off the mark. Johnson will lead the way again. Copla running the floor well and making the layup. Great pass by Johnson. Last two possessions, he shows he can finish in the open floor and he also can dish in the open floor. Very unselfish player. And that's going to be the last time out for LCA. What happened earlier when Jeff Platt called a timeout, they gave him a 60 second, he requested a 30 second. So they're giving, they gave him an extra full timeout essentially. Exactly. So they gave him another full timeout. He got four full timeouts and one 30 second timeout, which he didn't use to his advantage. Benedictine, however, has used the both full, the extra full timeout to their advantage. They stayed the entire timeout when that occurred. And they're still down 16 with a minute and a half to go. Benedictine fans chanting warm up the bus. I will say the Benedictine student section very organized. One thirty eight left, fifty nine forty three Benedictine. Farrow goes in, no good, rebound Johnson. Gorski gonna get back to the line. He's one for two on the night. 
B.J. Farrow with his second. Andrew Pollard now will come in for Tillis. Oddly, Tillis has made three three-pointers. And Gorski with his eighth point tonight. Definitely had a bigger impact than eight points, though. Definitely did. Rebounded the ball well, was a shot-blocking presence inside. Majors called for a travel. 114 on the clock. And Benedictine's gonna empty the bench. Faye Shaheen, RJ Gordon, Josh Pilot, Caleb Ortiz, and Kalen Farrell. Coming in for Benedictine here. Farrell will get in the scoring column. One minute to go here in the game. Clint with a three, no good. Ball staying in bounds. Farrow Gable to move it up to Jean. Pollard going, rejected, and it's gonna be a foul by Farrell. By Farrow, and that was get the substitute in. Farrow gets charged for his third timeout. Spencer Shock waiting to check in. Going to the line, RJ Gordon. Thirty-three seconds left here in this game. Benedictine's talent advantage took over in the second half, as well as their size advantage. Just wore LCA down. LCA had a great run, though, beating the number one seed, Paul the Six. Something to be proud of for this year. Just checking in with Spencer Shock for LCA. Ball out of bounds off of Benedictine. Three-pointer off the mark. Rebound for Shaheen. Benedictine gonna ride this one out. Zach, what did you think here with 20 point victory for Benedictine in the semifinals? Uh, Benedictine played a great game. <laughs> with rebounds, and they, they just brought it to the basket, and LCA just wasn't able to stop them. It was a great game by both teams, uh, but congrats to Benedictine. Midnight striking for LCA here. Definitely Cinderella. Uh, just didn't have it tonight. Uh, it was tough for them to stop. Johnson and Gill, both very, very good players. So uh, their season comes to an end. Benedictine lives to play another day. State final tomorrow. Your final here today, Benedictine 63, LCA 43. Thanks so much for watching on VISA.TV.